We're going to get started with a quick introduction about today's event and the agenda for today. Welcome again. So this is the WeCare Initiative 2021, and we're very thrilled to be here uh, with you. So this is year three. We're growing with purpose. You're going to see the ecosystem, the leaders that are with us today. Uh, thanks to all of them for the support and for being there from day one. Very exciting program to present you. The idea behind WeCare 2021 is simple. We have to build businesses that has, have high impact and with high impact networks. The world we live in, as you many of you have realized and seen, is complicated, but also filled with opportunities, exciting opportunities in healthcare, in digital health, artificial intelligence. There's, there is also disruption. Uh, going on, and it's complicated sometimes to understand really what's going on, which requires also new networks and communities that the one we have to be basically collectively learn and make the most of what is happening in today's uh, world. Also, you've heard about green tech being important, climate change being a problem, new economies uh, being uh, put together, circular economies or digital economies. Uh, that, Eco cities and creativity. So today we are all entrepreneurs at our core. The technological revolution in many ways have pressed the reset button in sometimes challenging ways, but sometimes very exciting ways. And we hope today we're gonna to give you some opportunities to learn about these opportunities and this program that's gonna help you connect you to fantastic cities, Boston and Strasbourg with us today and many other clusters. To build a company, to scale up a company, it takes a village. And we have more than a village. Uh, we have different cities, different partners from different backgrounds, from healthcare, eco city, green tech, investors, uh, the city of Strasbourg, the city of Boston, economic development agencies that you see listed here. So this is one unique aspect of this program. You have a whole ecosystem contributing to your success as an entrepreneur. And we're gonna to present to you what is uh, on the agenda for you. So Azadeh, with no further ado, can you take us through the agenda and the next step for the event? Absolutely. Welcome everyone. Thanks Alistair for that introduction. So we have a great lineup of speakers today and very glad we can mobilize everyone. So we're really gonna start with sort of a 30,000 foot view on just the importance of diplomacy, building these connections, collaboration, then we're going to go down to the city leaders who are going to give you a bit more of a flavor of how the initiative started and what their role is really in the economic development process. Then the Innovo team will present you a little bit more about the program, how you can enroll and participate. Um, and then we'll go into the future of healthcare. So we're going to have some great ecosystem leaders talking about how you can actually get access to a lot of the tools to help your business accelerate then green technology, which we're very excited to incorporate that this year into our program. And then we'll go into the alumni who are also you know, previously part of our program. They're gonna share their stories and experiences on you know, how they felt and what they really achieved out of this. And then finally, an exciting keynote from Bernard Kress from Microsoft, who's pioneering a really incredible technology that's touching every industry. And then we'll finally uh, end up with the Q&A section. Thank you, Azade. And on the logistic sides? So yep. So really, it's just going to be very clear. So we're going to have the different speakers. Please feel free to enter your questions in the Q&A. So we'll try and get to them uh, during the panelist section. Um, everything's going to be done in English, but we do have a few French speakers, uh, and it will be translated into English. But please definitely type any questions. We want this to be interactive. And if we can't get to them, during the panelists, we'll try and get to everything at the end. Excellent, and for the English translation, we'll announce it when it is, and you're gonna find an interpretation button in your Zoom menu, where you're gonna be able to select the channel you wanna be in, depending on the language. Thank you. So we've helped over 40 companies the last two years in medtech, digital, biopharma, but also in the eco city space. Our focus for this initiative is really cross industry where we help on the business model, reinventing the business model, finding new pathway of growth, of profit, finding customers and partners. The objective today 
is to enroll 12 companies from Boston and Strasbourg in the three months program that's going to take place over the summer and present it to you. Uh, and the applications are uh, due by May 15th, and we will uh, select the final participants by May 30th. The goal is to globalize, scale up businesses in the US and Europe, and also with all of you who want to participate, participate in a collective learning and larger community experience where we help each other, we find new partnerships and uh, synergies. So, and based on your participation, the link that we will be providing to you in a, in a few, you'll be um, able to customize with us the tracks to make sure each of you get maximum value out of this program. So get ready to learn, to grow, to expand, to gain major insights, foresights, new opportunities to pivot maybe your business and to access extremely valuable networks in the city of Boston, Strasbourg, across Europe. We're very excited to be able to offer all this to you. It's a unique city to city approach. It's the sister city and other city approach with Strasbourg and Boston, but more cities are uh, coming around us as well and, and this initiative. It's a program for entrepreneurs uh, about recovery, but also growth post pandemic. It's uh, also to help us in a rapidly changing world, which requires new formulas and everyone to participate. So it's not just technologists, scientists, entrepreneurs. We really believe that the future of innovation or innovation requires everybody to be integrated in that, uh, these ecosystems. So we can all think about what is it we want for tomorrow. Right? So it's not just designed by a couple of entrepreneurs, but really the community and everybody. With no further ado, uh, and with great excitement, I want to uh, open the floor to Arnaud Montré and Darak Paradisio. Arnaud, thank you for the um, support from the beginning of this initiative. So Arnaud Montré, uh, really uh, great to have you with us today. Arnaud Montré is the French consul in Boston, and he's going to give us a, a quick uh, introduction about what the consulate does in Boston and his participation in this initiative. Thank you, Arnaud Montré. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Alisto. It's a real pleasure to be with you to kickstart this uh, new round of exchanges between the uh, Boston ecosystem and the Strasbourg ecosystem. You know, last year we celebrated the 60th anniversary of the Boston-Strasbourg uh, Sister City Agreement. It's one of the most vibrant agreements, uh, Sister City Agreements, uh, between a French city and a US city. And uh, I think it, it's based on common features between these two great environments. Um, uh, Strasbourg is said to be in France a very hardworking city, a very beautiful city and uh, innovative and I think the same goes for Boston and so it's no surprise that uh, you managed to create those strong links. So thank you to the two cities, I think it's wonderful what you're doing together and thank you to Inuvo who is doing a great job to foster those uh, exchanges. Uh, this uh, uh, pandemic has uh, badly hurt uh, the human uh, exchanges over the Atlantic, as we all know. Um, it's been a challenge to continue those um, travels between Boston and France. That was really one of the key, uh, one of the keys of the development of the French ecosystem, innovation ecosystem here in Boston. So let's hope that the sanitary conditions will get better soon and that those travels can resume. Because before the pandemic, we had seen an uh, ever increasing level of interdependence with really the two ecosystems and Strasbourg among them, um, um, uh, really uh, uh, featured by um, um, uh, ever increasing exchanges. Um, the French Treasury has made an assessment, an estimation of uh, the level of investments, French investments in Boston, and came to the conclusion that France uh, is probably ranked number three in terms of uh, foreign companies investing in Massachusetts, creating more than 25,000 jobs and accounting for, uh, roughly speaking, 13% of all FDI in Massachusetts. So you can see that this is, this is a very strong dimension of our partnership. And the same goes uh, um, about US investments in France. So thank you very much for all those entrepreneurs that are, are creating uh, so much value on the two shores of the Atlantic. I think we have a great model uh, with um, innovative companies creating branches in the US, 
and uh, commercial branches in the US uh, with R&D capabilities in France and in the US, all working together to develop a strong uh, company uh, with great um, uh, objectives. So thank you so much, Alistair, again, you know, the consulate is here to help any company that uh, faces difficulties, either in settling uh, in Boston or um, uh, traveling between uh, France and the US, we try to help as much as possible and DAs with our, our US counterparts. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to today's exchanges. Excellent. Thank you, Arnaud Montre, very much for, for this introduction. And also feel free, everybody, to ask questions, Q&A. We can pass them along to the different speakers. So thank you, Arnaud, for all the support. I know everyone is very excited to, to have you with us today. Thank you. So next, uh, so the idea also quickly for all the participants, the speakers, it's gonna be very dynamic where we're gonna have a series of speakers. So next is Darak Paradiso, US Consul in Strasbourg. Very happy to have you Darak as well. Thank you uh, for, for, you can take the floor whenever you're ready as well. All right, well, good morning, Boston. Good afternoon to the friends in Strasbourg. We have a beautiful day here today and it is fantastic to be here and I can't wait until we can actually be in the same place physically again as well. Um, thank you to Alistair and Inovo for the invitation to be here today. It's an honor to speak alongside so many distinguished panelists, uh, including my counterpart in Boston. Hello, Arno. Um, and the dynamic representatives of both ecosystems. It's great to see so many devoted friends of this long sister city relationship and the different connections we have between the two cities from all different organizations. Indeed, as Arno said, 60 years of a sister city relationship is remarkable in itself. <coughs> and this particular relationship is extremely active, extremely dynamic and extremely impressive. It's really a lot of fun to be part of it. The U.S. Consulate General in Strasbourg is thrilled to be able to support the We Care initiative again this year. We do indeed care. Uh, this is a very impressive initiative and also the individual companies that have participated are amazing to see what they go on and do. So we look forward to that again. Entrepreneurship is a, a strong point of American culture and a mainstay of our economic landscape. It drives growth, job creation and innovation. And certainly it has been a long and uncertain year for all of us. And we need brilliant, courageous risk takers like you entrepreneurs more than ever. Entrepreneurs challenge the status quo, push society forward and inspire all of us to trust and invest in our ideas. And the themes for this year, healthcare, renewable energies, these are key themes where we need the best and the bravest thinkers from the US and France to be working together. These issues, along with all of the challenges that they encompass from climate change to caring for the elderly are not American issues or French issues. They are global, they are universal and the Boston and Strasbourg ecosystems are mobilized and well-placed to lead in a global search for solutions that can benefit everyone. Indeed, uh, as my French counterpart mentioned, the trade relationship between Eastern France in particular and the United States, particularly Massachusetts, is very, very strong. We have about 500 US companies in the Grand Est region right now. Um, and it's been a strong exchange in trade and, and commerce. Uh, many American companies have come here since the 1960s or even before. And even though we already have a strong presence, there is always room for more. And I think we're seeing a development and a shift from traditional industries to more, uh, more technology and startup type industries. So the diversity of what people can do here and the benefits of being in this area of France are particularly strong. So as you move forward, please consider the US Consulate General in Strasbourg to be a part of your network and a resource. Two of our most important tasks are uh, promoting US exports to the Grand Est and also promoting French investment in the US. And we very much look forward to seeing what you are up to. And we strive to support you in building the connections and building trade between these two cities. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Derek Paradiso. This was fantastic. I'm already pumped uh, hearing uh, these two introductions. And what's important to understand also for entrepreneurs is the consulates have deep networks. So it's really great. And we've been experiencing it firsthand where you can get access to a lot of different partners and different programs and grants and so on. So we really encourage you also to ask questions and uh, you know, 
physically connect with these uh, organization. Thank you, Darag. This is fantastic. Thank you. We'll be moving to the next speakers. Sorry, the agenda is pretty packed. So we're keeping this dynamic. Thank you. So next, uh, the next speakers, I'm just going to share the screen rapidly here. So you see uh, the, the speakers. So the next speakers, we, we're going a level down. So we just heard two speakers representing more the international trades, national trades. This is now regional and international economic development at the city level. So we have Delphine Krieger, Anne-Marie Jean, Sarah Delude, and James Coleman representing both the city of Strasbourg and Boston. So with no further ado, Delphine Krieger, the floor is yours whenever you're ready. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Alistair. Thank you. Good afternoon from Strasbourg. Um, thank you very much for joining us today for this presentation. Um, Strasbourg, the institutional European capital, represents a little bit more than 500,000 inhabitants and is located in the heart of the Upper Rhine region, which counts more than 6 million inhabitants, a gross domestic product of around 200 billion euros, 167 universities, higher education and research institutes, more or less 170,000 students and about 600 clusters and businesses networks. Definitely, it's one of the most dynamic regions in Europe. Innovation is part of Strasbourg DNA, uh, with the first university in France out of Paris region, five active Nobel Prizes, the first health incubator in France with Senia, which uh, Stéphane Chauffria, the CEO, should be connected today and countless innovations, pro projects, and businesses during, um, created over the years and with a clear acceleration during the last decade. Today, we are proud to join forces for the third year in a row with the city of Boston, our sister city for more than 60 years, like it has been said, to encourage our innovators, entrepreneurs to collaborate and grow their ideas and businesses in both Europe and the US. We will be more than happy to support you with our acceleration and soft landing program called the Explore Program. We collaborate with the city of Boston and Innovo and with all the main actors in innovation and business here in Europe. This product also includes some, this program, sorry, also includes some funding to assist you settling. So this year we are welcoming and supporting startups and companies from the healthcare industry but we are also strongly encouraging businesses in sustainable development, such as green tech, renewable energy, or circular economy, as well as businesses in creativity, design, or gaming to join us. You will have um, Tamim Daoudi introducing the, this topic in, in a few minutes. So make sure to reach out to me if you have any question, I will be more than happy to assist. And with uh, no further ado, I will leave the floor to my vice president, Mrs. Anne-Marie Jean. Thank you very much. Hello, Anne-Marie, I think you muted. Perfect. <laughs> Hi, so I'm Anne-Marie Jean, Vice President of Strasbourg Metropolis, and I'm delighted to join you today and be part of this great event when both communities from Strasbourg and Boston come together to support each other and make a difference with their innovations. Please allow me to follow in French. Je suis très heureuse de voir cette I'm very happy to see this collaboration between Strasbourg and uh, Boston uh, celebrating uh, their union for more than 60 years now, uh, trying to expand businesses and diplomacy uh, and democracy Strasbourg is the capital for European citizens, and it's also true uh, for the uh, economic territory. We are sharing a lot of values in terms of ambition, uh, and climate change, uh, global warming concerning the whole uh, planet, and we're very much aware of it. In order to overcome these obstacles, we need uh, to focus on healthcare, green tech, and circular e economy. These fields are, are very important for Strasbourg, who's, be, who's placed as a, as a leader in, uh, in, these, in these fields. This is a uh, true uh, will power to help all the companies in their international development. In Strasbourg, we do also engage with the companies uh, of the region 
to uh, continue building a local economy, a sustainable one, in order to improve uh, the quality of life of our citizen. I do invite you to continue this effort together. Great. Th thank you, Anne-Marie Jean. Thank you very much. And you're definitely uh, on the field right now. So thanks uh, for taking the time to, to do this uh, talk with us. Really um, uh, grateful for that. Thank you on behalf of the whole group. Thank you. So feel free, everyone, you know, to ask questions in the chat. We'll get to each of, the, of your questions. So don't hesitate. This is meant to be a conversation as well. So please feel free to, you know, to engage. Thank you, or to comment uh, any of the of the discussion, so we can incorporate this in the programming. So thank you, Delphine. Thank you, Anne Marie Jean. Uh, next is the city of Boston with Sarah Delude and James Coleman. We'll start with James Coleman, just because James Coleman has something uh, to do um, right away. He's going to be running for city council in Boston. So this is a scoop for for all of you and he has to get his nomination uh, documents today. So uh, James Coleman, whenever you are ready, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Alistair. Thank you, Inovo, for always being proactive in promoting and fostering the exchange in our two beautiful cities. We, Sarah Delude and myself, bring you some warm greetings on behalf of our 55th mayor, Kim Jenny, who coincidentally is 55 years old as well. She's the first woman of color, and the first woman actually, and the first person of color to be mayor of our great city. The timing of the title of this year's initiative couldn't be any better. We care for healthcare and our planet. This is, could not be more fitted than what we're doing today, especially in the recent pledge of President Biden to cut greenhouse gas emissions in the US by more than 50% by 2030. All I see in this pledge is opportunities, 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 jobs, jobs for entrepreneurs, jobs for everyone. However, we need to prepare the younger generation to meet the opportunities of tomorrow. This is why cities need to carve a global vision for their local strategies more than ever. Let us restore the opportunities for upward mobility and prosperity for the general population. And we need to do so by creating and initiating programs for the younger generation so that they can fully develop their full potential. We need to offer an outlet for entrepreneurs to tackle the challenges of today and tomorrow. We need to incorporate entrepreneurship and startups in our vocational training programs in both cities. College and university is not for everyone. However, the younger generation with an entrepreneurial mind that are graduating in high school or even not graduating that have a business idea need to have the tools to succeed to make sure that that um, idea comes to life. So many really brilliant ideas go nowhere sometimes because of lack of coaching or improper business environment. We need to more clusters of shared space, especially for the younger generations. We need to give them the tools needed to fully develop their full potential and their ideas to succeed because their success is our success. They are the future of tomorrow's workforce and entrepreneurs are the future of cities like Boston and Strasbourg. Let us change the world together. Thank you. Great, thank you, James. Thank you very much. So as everyone is hearing, you know, we, we are driven by purpose. Uh, it's not just business for business. We understand that to create value, it's also to have a vision and to work on solving some of the pressing problems we have in front of us today, but also the opportunities, the exciting opportunities that James was talking about. Now, so thank you, James Coleman, who has been uh, very supportive since the beginning from the city of Boston, uh, as is in his role of international affairs. So now, uh, with no further ado, Sarah Delude, uh, Head of Economic Development uh, for Boston and this, and, and this initiative. And Sarah Delude has always also been extremely instrumental in everything we've been doing. So thank you, Sarah. Sarah, are you with us? I am, can you hear me? Yes, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so again, my name is Sarah Delude. I'm from the Mayor's Office of Economic Development and co-chair the Global Affairs team with my colleague, James. It's so wonderful to be with you all today. Um, this program is very special to my heart, having spent some time in Strasbourg myself as a university student. I know 
what a beautiful and welcoming city it is. Um, and to know that Boston and Strasbourg share this historic relationship um, to me gives us a lot of opportunity. Um, so as many people have mentioned, the sister city dates back to 1960. And I really wanna recognize Mary Louise Burke who is on the call today and the work that the Boston Strasbourg Sister City Association here in Boston does. I know they have a counterpart in Strasbourg as well. I um, wanna thank Consul General Montre and Paradiso as well as Anne Marie Jean for their support. Um, and of course, Alistair for your um, tireless work um, to bring our two cities together. What this program really does is so unique because we're not just thinking about a one-off connection between our cities, we're really building a sustainable partnership between um, Boston and Strasbourg. And we started focusing on the med tech sector. Of course, we're expanding out, recognizing we are both um, our leaders in sustainability and environmental science. And so this is, this is very important to us as being eco cities, um, thinking about the, the global challenges together. Um, so wanted to give you a little bit of information for those not as familiar with Boston yet. Um, so the city of Boston, um, while a globally known city is actually quite a small city um, in terms of our population, we're about 680,000 residents um, in the city. Largely in the metropolitan area, though, we're about 4.8 million people. Um, and here we're really known for our robust startup community. So we have over 70 colleges and universities in the region and 250,000 students. Um, and, and universities really are the heart of what um, pumps our innovation economy here. Uh, we have about 300, uh, 3,500 startups in the region, many of them spun out of universities um, with lots of great ideas and support for those startups. Um, and Boston is generally regarded as the fifth largest startup ecosystem in the world. Uh, and we're really proud of that. Um, in terms of venture capital, I know venture capital in the United States is, is different from the rest of the world. Here in Boston, um, we're probably the second largest VC hub with over $50 million in uh, venture capital under management. And in particular, I know um, a lot of people in Boston like to talk about the life sciences industry, an industry we really excel in. Um, we're looking at about $5.8 billion in 2020 um, in venture capital in the region. Um, just to kind of reiterate about the life sciences industry, because it really is probably our, our top industry when you think about the healthcare and life sciences industry together, along with digital health. Um, we've really partnered regionally with our neighbors here um, the cities of Quincy, Somerville, Braintree, and of course Cambridge um, to develop the life sciences corridor. So really making this a regional project, not just a city of Boston project in the life sciences. And this artery is all um, super connected with public transit. We're looking at a cluster of research, innovation, and product development, uh, the largest cluster on earth. Um, and it's something we're, we're quite proud of, but also something we know um, is fueled by innovation that comes in from all over the world, again, through maybe the universities, through corporate partnerships, through research. And so we depend on folks in Strasbourg and around the world to help us fuel that life sciences corridor. Um, there's about a thousand companies within the industry cluster here uh, with plenty more room for, for growth. Um, and of course, this network is really supercharged uh, by, by the talent that you'll find here um, again, through the universities, you'll find world-class hospitals, research institutions, very high-tech laboratories and innovation spaces. We have about 100 different accelerators, co-working spaces, innovation spaces in the Boston area. Um, so there's really something for everyone in every industry. Um, and then in terms of eco-cities, um, I'm really excited that we've added this component this year because it's really important for Boston and I know for Strasbourg as well. Um, investing in sustainability, both politically as well as in the private sector. Um, on an environmental issues, we, we take climate change very seriously um, and have robust climate resilience plans in place. We're a coastal city right on the Boston Harbor um, and have experienced um, the effects of climate change here. So putting a lot of plans into place there, but we're also looking to the private sector to see what sorts of solutions are out there um, in terms of clean energy. There is a... Um, an, an industry center, the Clean Energy Center, which is a quasi state agency. Um, I believe my state counterpart, Mark Sullivan's on the call here. So I wanna recognize Mark um, and the different quasi centers here. But in terms of clean energy, there's the Clean Energy Center, a public private partnership. 
as well as the Windblade Test Center, which is a really, really cool, innovative thing that we have right here in Boston. I know it's a, a Massachusetts agency, but um, the Windblade Test Center is right here in Boston in the Charlestown neighborhood, right on the water um, and allowing companies to come and test their turbine blades um, up to 90 meters in length. They're enormous. It's a really cool center, um, but something really different and unique that we're able to offer here in Boston um, for testing of really wind blades of all sizes. Um, and so I, I just wanted to give kind of a flavor of what Boston has to offer in these two industries. Um, of course, high technology is another area we really excel in. And I know that that really overlaps with, with life sciences and, and clean tech as well. So um, lots to offer here in Boston. And I say that really is an invitation um, for those of you in Strasbourg to come um, explore, get to know us. We can't wait to meet you. We can't wait to work together to find partnerships and opportunities and to find solutions for the challenges that we're both facing. So thank you so much for, for logging in and joining us today. And we can't wait to, to talk more. Back to you, Alistair. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you very much for this. So as you've heard it, uh, basically the city of Strasbourg will open the European market to you. City of Boston is really a global hub that's going to give you access also to the US uh, market. So thank you, Sarah, for, for this. We're going to go next uh, on the next um, element of the agenda, Azadeh. Yes, we would like to actually put up a few polls just to kind of gauge the audience. So Alistair, if you wanted to put those up. Okay, so you should see a poll uh, pop up on your screen. Thank you, everybody. Okay, we'll, we'll show the result of the poll so everyone can see uh, who's in the audience today. Thank you. Okay, so it seems to stabilize here. So everyone has voted. Okay, so share results. So we have about 49% of healthcare, green tech 10% and other 50%. So other, that's interesting. Feel free to put in the chat, you know, what industry you are in. Uh, so we can get a, a feel of you know who's in the room and, and present the program according to the industry you're in. So that was the, the first one. We'll, we'll have a second uh, poll. One second. Thank you for participating in this poll. And then the second one. So we'd be interested to know this one here. So one second. Okay. What would you what be, would be your main goal to participate in this initiative? Access to funding, access to client, access to partners, evaluating the US or the European market, education, insight, networking, other. Give us a flavor, a little bit of where we can help. You've, you've heard uh, we've mobilized leaders of the ecosystem and everyone is really there to help you achieve your goals. So, you know, tell us what you need and we'll align what we do to, to your needs, which is really one of the strengths of this initiative. Great, I'll share the result also with everybody. This year also, we really wanna operate as a more of a community where we basically, you know, communicate, share, allow people to network together. So we'll, you'll see in a few minutes, we'll be presenting the program for you. Feel free to ask questions as well. Okay, so the poll seems to be stabilizing. Thanks everybody. So end the polling, share the results. Okay, can everybody see? So networking is definitely a big component of this. Uh, we will indeed have throughout the program a speed networking event using other technologies than Zoom, which will allow you to have face-to-face -face interaction digitally with the people that you know are here today, but also other people from the network that Sarah presented, Sarah and Delphine and Anne-Marie Jean and James. And so basically uh, with no further ado, we'll go to the next uh, part of the agenda. Okay, perfect, thank you everybody. So next is basically the Innovo team. So my name is Alistair Schneider, the CEO of Innovo, and I'm here to present to you the program that we have for this year with Azade and Michel Husser, who will be talking in a few as well. So I'm gonna share my screen for a few seconds. Okay. 
one second. So, so here you will see a page that you can access. And uh, as I did, feel free to share the link of this page in the chat. So this is sxbbos.com, which is the airport indicators for the two cities, Strasbourg and Boston. So you will find the page WeCare 2021, which is a healthcare and eco city green tech. So in eco city, we really englobe a lot of things. It's the future of cities. Right. So basically, what's the future of cities? It's, of course, you know what you've heard, green tech, but it's also the future of industry, the way we work and so on. So we will have these programs available to you. So you go on sxbbos.com and you will find basically a nice video about the two cities, but more importantly, the timeline. So the timeline to participate. So today with the 27th, we have the kickoff ceremony you'll have the application link right here. So if you click here, it's gonna take you to a form on Eventbrite again. It's a different form from today, but which will ask you, okay, why do you wanna participate? What is it you wanna get from the program based on what you've learned today? And we will come back to you basically to you know, make sure you, you get enrolled with what types of support system grants uh, uh, can apply and so on. So the application should be until May 15th, and by May 30th, we'll be announcing the final participants. So then throughout June to September, we'll be helping you, the different experts from the program that are gonna be showing you in a few minutes, uh, scale up, shape up your business, internationalize, connect, find strategic partnership in Boston, mostly digitally, which is great. The whole program has been started digitally before everyone migrated to digital. So we've, we've been you know, uh, resilient and improving our approaches using also these technologies, which works absolutely perfectly and absolutely fine because actually you can connect to a lot more people than by having to travel and, and so on. But then uh, travel is still more than welcome you know, post pandemic. In October, we'll have the grand finals and December 2021, we'll share some of the successes. Talking about successes, in a few, you will hear from alumni who have participated in the program in prior years, and you'll hear from them uh, directly what successes they've been able to generate thanks to the two cities, the ecosystems and the program. So the impact, the impact that we're focusing on is really globalizing entrepreneurs, good for healthcare, we want to transform healthcare, and you'll be hearing from the ecosystem of NextMed and also Mass eHealth Institute and also a corporate uh, Takeda. Also good for the planet and other co and communities. So rethinking how innovation can apply to the communities. Can everyone mute themselves, please? There's a bit of a background note here. Azadeh, can you check maybe who's uh, you know providing a bit of noise here and mute them? Thank you. Okay, one second. I'm, I found the person, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute. Okay. One second, please. I'm gonna mute the person. Okay, I, I can't, okay, mute. Perfect, so thank you. So basically international startup globalization program. So this one, the track number one is really the beachhead program to remember the most. It's the startup program. This is a initiative focused on entrepreneurs and startups created by entrepreneurs, for entrepreneurs, with entrepreneurs and entire ecosystem to help these entrepreneurs. It's a program of three months the U to explore the US and Europe with the Explore program from Strasbourg. It's, there's, a, there's a value attached to this of roughly 15,000 euros, which is 17,500 USD but there's grants and sponsorship and special discounts that may apply. So we encourage you to really apply. And then from your application, we will dispatch you to the different ecosystem partners who have programs to help you pay for these, uh, this program, depending on, on your, your situation and level. Of course, if you're already a company making $5 million in revenue, you know, the, the grants will be less applicable than if you're a bit more early stage. So we really encourage you to participate, to apply. Azade will be sharing the link of this page, but also the application form. And I will as well, we will send you emails. Please feel free to apply as soon as possible and by May 15th. So the startup program, 
here. Let me show you a little bit more. Can you see the screen? Yes, Azadeh, can you see? Perfect. So here, if you click on learn more, and we'll share that link as well, this will give you an idea of what is the program about. So it's really 14 sessions led by serial entrepreneurs who have been there, done that, have grown businesses, pivoted them, raised capital, took businesses to IPO and so on, which will take you through a unique curriculum that's really going to bulletproof your business. So a lot of companies, when they go on in another region, Europe or US, there's a lot of transformation needed. So we thought about this and we designed with the ecosystem a program that's going to transform you into a leading technology and digital bankable reality, going straight to how do you make money? How do you make revenue? How do you convince investors? We work with investors so we know what they see, involving your team from a product founder or technical founder team or scientific team to a high growth startup executive and team, help you achieve more results, more growth and be more attractive to investors. So I'm not gonna go through the whole program today, but this page is available for you, you to look at. There's 14 sessions. We break down what every segment of this program will help you do. It's expertise from Boston, but also from the European side. If you are a US company looking to go to Europe, we put the best of the best people in front of you to really help you think differently about your business model. There's a qualification is basically early stage companies or companies trying to find partners or raise capital. The core faculty is myself as the overall coordinator of the program. We have Michel Husser, from whom you're going to be hearing about in a few. He's a visionary business angel, serial entrepreneur, exited entrepreneur. He has invested in a unicorn in France, so he shares a lot of his wisdom with all of us during the program. We have Bijoy Sagar, who's also on the advisory board of Innovo and is on the board of Bayer, ex-board of Stryker. So he comes with the venture capital hat on. He works with the biggest, most prominent VC firms on the planet, such as Greylock and others. So he comes with the VC formula, if you will, and we will help you, you know, get to these elements. We have Azade, which I'm not going to introduce there because Azade is going to introduce herself in a few after myself. But Azade comes uh, with a PhD from MIT. She is our biochemist leader and also most, most importantly, handling all scientific ventures, strategic alliances, business development. She works with VCs and you're going to see what and hear from her what she lives every day and help you also fit into these boxes of the VCs. Fred Villander, who's a growth and product strategist, 20 years of experience in sales, in marketing, in, in pivoting your sales pitch to be able to close deals and contracts. He's been doing this for many of our alumni. Nick Anderson, who's on the call right now from Silicon Valley, super early over there, but he woke up for you as well and for us. So thank you, Nick. Nick is a business angel, president of Keretsu Forum, uh, which is the world leading business angel group uh, and uh, gives you access to a lot of investors. And he'll be working with you and also the business angels from France, business angels from Boston to develop that business angel ecosystem and that venture capital ecosystem. We have Gary Jinks also from the Silicon Valley, who is an expert in ecosystem development in entrepreneurship, who's going to be also participating in helping you grow your business. Finally, uh, and as needed, Darko Spoliaric is a strategic marketing ROI with whom I had the luck to work with. He's been turning around businesses. We have Ronnie Deaver, digital marketer, everything about automation. And we have other experts also in that domain for marketing automation. Today, it's all about digital sales. So you got to automate your funnel, no matter who you are. If you're a biotech company, health tech company, you have to automate your funnel, use all the tools and the technologies. Otherwise, you're going to be falling behind basically all the other companies that do it. And this team will help you do that. And finally, Chris Kalabukis, who is a, has over 85 patents uh, to his name. He's also from the Silicon Valley. So you see really a mix from Boston leaders, Silicon Valley leaders, and this is just a few of the people you're going to be meeting with. So we really recommend you to look at the program. You should be receiving the link. Get in touch with us. We'll present you the program and help you understand how it fits with what you're doing specifically. So hopefully this is helpful. And from here, 
I will go back to the initiative. So that's track one. Okay, so the, the beauty of this program, you have a track that's highly focused on business generation, strategic partnership, business development, and looking deep into your business. No other program will be looking deep into your business like, like this program. It will prepare you really before you come to the US. Then we have sponsored ecosystem programs and support. So these are the programs that actually support the startup program. When you're a startup, what do you need? You need access to markets. You need access to hospitals if you're in the healthcare space. You need access to industry players in the green tech uh, place or to cities to be able to implement your renewable energy solution or your mobility solution and so on. So we've built these ecosystems in which you will find hospitals for the track to healthcare, hospital, clinician, patient, corporate business development in, in the space of healthcare. So as we help you build your business, we're gonna also connect you with the healthcare ecosystem. Same for green tech. So we have this green tech ecosystem. We're gonna show you a couple of the logos and partners we have. Track four is about Investor United Forum and Demo Days. So this track is about putting together investors, business angel, VCs, government grants, all together in one discussion on how do we help you grow your business. Often it's very you know, segmented. We bring everyone together and we'll open for you demo days and opportunities to present your companies to investors, get feedback and potentially even get funded. So in these demo days. Track five, it's, this is quite exciting as well as economic development opportunities acceleration. So the track five is about putting economic development leaders from Strasbourg, from Boston, but also bringing other economic development leaders that we've been meeting with in this group to find synergies between cities and also to help entrepreneurs access these cities or more cities. Because at the end of the day, what is market access? Is accessing a market, what is a city? It's a market. So the ID track five is really to have these city leaders reflect together and see how they can actually elevate the market access in their cities. Track six, it's about corporate innovation and partnership. So in the track six, you'll see a lot of corporates. So if you're a corporate executive listening to this, you know, this is going to be a track for you. We're going to help you understand how you can disrupt or self disrupt your business, innovate, working with startups working with the alumni, working with the existing companies that have enrolled, connecting to the local ecosystem, local accelerators in Boston or in Strasbourg, SEMIA, Mass Challenge, and, and universities to find the technology, find the innovation you need to elevate your business. And then track number seven is forever alumni. So basically, like Sarah said, it's not a one shot. It's a long term uh, process and, and strategy that we have with the two cities. So all alumni that are particip have participated in past years or are participating this year will always be joining this community and always be offered opportunities of the current year. So if you're an alumni listening to this, you know, example of things that are going to be uh, offered to you and you're going to hear it in a few from Nicolas Pellerin and the, 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 the rest of the team there are things like access to hospitals, specific programs, specific grants, free rent for one month to immerse yourself in Boston once things reopen and so on and so on working with CIC, Cambridge Innovation Center and so on will we'll find you a spot so you can really fluidify your market access. So that's the initiative Here's the logos here that you should be seeing. So we organize everything in groups. So we have the economic development agencies of Strasbourg. Typically these organization, their job is to connect you with opportunities in the ecosystem. You have the EcoDev cohort from Boston. So same thing, but on the uh, Boston side. So we have the city of Boston, city of Strasbourg in the prior group, of course, we have the Mass Tech Collaborative with Mass eHealth Institute that we, you're going to be hearing about in a few, Cambridge Innovation Center, one of the best uh, co-working place in the world with sites in Rotterdam, Boston, San Luis, Miami, uh, Tokyo, and so on. Uh, we have the consulate uh, that you've heard, Mass Challenge, XR Terra, which will be more uh, related to augmented reality if your business is in augmented reality. And then, of course, the French American Chamber of Commerce, uh, who are uh, today on the call as well, who is uh, by themselves an entire network across the entire US. 
uh, which I'm very proud to be on the board of advisor uh, for this uh, uh, organization. So it gives you more access to more networks. Then we have the Healthcare NextMed network. So this is only a few of the partners that you will be seeing. Uh, we have NextMed, we have IRCAD, which is a fantastic surgery center, training center in Strasbourg, in Sao Paulo, in Rwanda, in Taiwan. We have Takeda, the corporate um, that is based in Boston, the health factory, which is a you know, uh, hacking health, uh, hackathon, sorry, uh, one of the largest in Europe. Again, a lot of access to a lot of different groups and the hospitals, of course, who ultimately have needs. So for the healthcare startups, what we want to do is not start with the idea, but start with the problem. So that's where this ecosystem becomes super great to have. Same thing for EcoCity, you'll hear about Schneider Electric and a few, and 2CRSI also, who will be talking about the green tech. And finally, but not last, many business angels and investors. So the Innovo Capital Network, which is made of high ticket business angels across the world, but also we are member and thankful uh, of all the support from the New England Venture Capital Association, which is over 90 firms managing collectively $90 billion, investing roughly 3 billion every month in biotech, in healthcare, in e-commerce, in green tech, and so on. So we'll be working with these groups, with HLM Venture Partners, a prominent leading venture capital firm in Boston in healthcare, Kiritsu Forum, who invest across the board of all industries, but also French business angel groups such as We Like Startup, Kajuba Finance, which is Michel Lucer, you'll hear from him in a few, and South Valley Angel, a group of business angel in the Silicon Valley, connected also to the deep venture capital of uh, Silicon Valley. So that covers uh, my part for the initiative. Everything is uh, right here on sxbbus.com. You will find uh, the same on innovo.com. If you go here, you will find a link on the first page that takes you also to the registration form. You can look a little bit about what we do, the alumni we have, the community we have to get a good understanding of the different things you be, you'll be getting from this program. So thank you. That is my part. Uh, then Azade, I'll let you take over. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Alistair. We do have a couple of comments, actually. I see we have the French American Chamber of Commerce of New England. Good, good to have you here. Also, Michael Lake from Leading Cities. Uh, one question about uh, entrepreneurs from South America. Are they able to access this program as well? So I would say apply at this stage and then we can work with the different cities. So remember, we are the facilitators for the cities. So if the cities you know, think uh, that it's uh, absolutely acceptable, then we will uh, comply basically. So I would say apply and then let's go from there and work with the city of Strasbourg and the city of Boston. I do know both cities have an international view on what they are doing. So I would re highly recommend applying. Absolutely. And keep those questions coming. We'd love to keep this as an interactive discussion. Um, and maybe as I did just one more uh, part, uh, you know, you, uh, if you apply, you know, for the straws of the French companies and the US companies, we already have a lot of sponsorship or grants process. So these would be still limited to the Strasbourg companies, but I would still recommend applying. You may, we may find also some opportunities with your own economic development agencies. Perfect. So I will turn it over to myself then. Uh, great having you all. Thanks again, Alistair, for that really comprehensive overview. Again, we're really customizing these tracks based on previous years. So we're learning how to optimize this program, really tailor it to all of the participants. So make sure you take a look at that and let us know your comments and feedback. We'd love to hear from you. So I'd like to introduce myself. A lot of you may already know me um, via email or virtually, but I'm Azade. I'm a global business developer here at Innovo. Glad to introduce myself. I'm actually leading the BD activities specifically in the healthcare and biotech sectors. So I know we have quite a lot of healthcare participants here. 
I also work quite a lot with the corporate investors and venture capitalists in our network. So I do a lot of the scouting, deal flow, optimization, finding new opportunities for them. So it's interesting, my role is actually twofold. So on one hand, I'm helping entrepreneurs who are really looking to accelerate their technologies into the market, find and also address their core challenges. But on the other hand, I'm helping investors who are on that opposite side of the spectrum. And they're really on the quest to find those unique opportunities to invest in, cut through the clutter. We see a lot of clutter and in innovation um, and really get access to that high quality science and teams that are ready to expand. So having this experience on both sides has really given me an interesting and unique perspective. It's very enlightening. Um, and I see there's a lot of challenges we're facing, but the bottom line is that we're in a continuously evolving landscape. There's a ton of competition. There's a lot, you know, very little room for error. So it means that sometimes the best technologies won't necessarily make it to market. Um, so how do we really overcome this? One way is using initiatives like this. So this initiative that you're learning about today was really born out of this need to solve the challenges for entrepreneurs, especially in their journey to success. So even though we're experiencing these difficult times, it's really humbling and exciting to have all of these leaders mobilize, come together, create this support system for entrepreneurs who are looking forward to changing the world. Um, I myself have been in the Boston area for the past 10 years as a research scientist. I was in the biotech industry as well. Um, experienced a lot of failures, successes, seen a lot of companies, you know, succeed, a lot of them fail. So I kind of have that inside, I'm sure as many of you do, and also working a lot with the entrepreneurs in our venture studio, seeing kind of what their journeys look like. So we're happy to really bring that expertise to you. And, you know, please feel free to reach out to me directly or anyone else on the Innovo team if you'd like to chat more about what we're doing and learn more about the initiative or how you can get involved with Innovo as well. So with that, I will turn it over to Michelle, who's here, who is one of the co-founders of Innovo. Thanks all. Thank you, Azadeh. Thank you very much. Michelle, you say, are you with us? And uh, Yes, sir. Perfect. Thank you. Bonjour, uh, je suis... Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Michel Sam, I'm a co-founder of Innovo and uh, also a business angel for Kajuba. I'm very proud to be a, a player on the territory where the public instance have understood that the development of a city go through work uh, and entrepreneurship through uh, uh, the financing of public uh, structures uh, the, or, and amongst others, Project NextMed as a private investor and on behalf of them, I, we have understood that we are on a strong territory that we need to support. And we need to, to start thinking how uh, we could develop uh, our business uh, with an international scale. Uh, and as we have well understood uh, with our collaboration, um, that there's a lot that can be done. We will allow our uh, fellow uh, citizens to develop their company on our ter territory. And for that, we need to invest uh, in entrepreneurship, uh, startups, and initiatives like the, the Explore Acceleration Program involving uh, Strasbourg uh, and Boston, but also uh, enabling the Americans to apprehend the European market. Thanks to this work for the past three years, uh, us business angels have been able to invest in uh, Strasbourg uh, startups, uh, enabling a lot of, of uh, collaborations and creating a very dy dynamic uh, region. For the people that would love uh, to become a business angel, I'm there to help you. The world is evolving rapidly. We need to be players. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Michel. Thank you uh, for, for that. And thank you for the translation also. Uh, this is this was great. Uh, so basically, now with no further ado, let's keep the, the, the rhythm here. I'm going to announce the next uh, speakers.
Thank you, Michel. And feel free, any questions, any comments, feel, um, put them in the comments. We'll get back to you also with, with answers, uh, or each and every one of you, or just simply go on innovo.com. There's a chat. You can contact us uh, right here or contact one of the leaders you've heard talking, Delphine Krieger, Sarah Delude, if you're from Boston, and then we'll funnel everything uh, back uh, to the team organizing this uh, program. So on the next uh, speakers, let me introduce uh, the future of healthcare and biotech, uh, which is happening in Strasbourg and in Boston and together jointly uh, to tackle the aging population and the new uh, challenges ahead, but also opportunities. So with no further ado, Nicolas Pellerin, thank you, head of NextMed Strasbourg, uh, which is a prominent healthcare ecosystem in Europe and also real estate investment to create a, a hub um, uh, Carrefour, if you will, of basically healthcare. Thank you, Nicolas. Yeah. Hi, uh, hi everybody. Uh, uh, a great thanks, Alice, uh, for uh, and uh, and to your team for uh, for having organized this uh, this amazing event, uh, which aim at building a bridge and long term uh, partnership between Boston and Strasbourg ecosystem. And why not? We, we, we can partner with a South America organization, uh, as has been asked on the uh, Q&A. Um, I would like also to, uh, to welcome the attendees to, uh, to NextMed, uh, the European hub dedicated to uh, improving care. Uh, but let me start with a uh, with few data. Uh, as you certainly know, uh, we actually have to face some pressing challenges, just as, such as global growing aging population, but also major healthcare unmet needs as chronic diseases or new uh, diagnosis tool for cancer early detection. Uh, in fact, forecasts for uh, 2030 indicate that 70% of deaths worldwide will be due to chronic diseases. Uh, we, we also have to face an evolution of our healthcare models with the need to consider what I, I like to name bioconvergence, uh, which is the combination between AI, EL, medtech, and biology. Uh, if we take the, the example of, e, uh, of EL, the global market will increase by uh, 160% uh, by the next two years. So uh, it's quite amazing. Uh, and no, in, in few words, uh, what is NextMed and how NextMed want to tackle those challenges? Um, part of a very specific cross-border environment, including France, Germany, and Switzerland, NextMed is an healthcare, an healthcare district that's aimed at being the headquarters for healthcare companies who want to enter the European market. Uh, next, my ambition is to bring together on a single site in the earth of Swazburg, the European capital, patients, surgeons, scientists, hospital and company in the health sector. The aim is to promote the creation of development uh, and new businesses through scientific and medical research partnership in order to design 21st century health technologies. What I want you to remain today is that whatever you need, we will make it happen. The truth is that your business comes first because it saves lives. And our three national environments allow us outstanding cooperation to reduce time to market. In fact, a number of large companies have some R&D capability within this synergistic ecosystem. And just a few data, there are more than to, uh, 200 clinics and hospitals, and the highest density of academic and private research in Europe, just for this uh, small area. And next month's comprehensive team wants to help you to create and to integrate vertical value change from research to patient and hospital in order to solve your specific question and accelerate your innovation or product development in Europe. And thanks to our, one of our partners, thanks to uh, Connectus, our technology transfer office, uh, you can easily access technologies resulting from research in this three-national environment. And thanks to our three-national BioValley cluster, uh, you'll be able, able to access rapidly to your market, customers and partners, uh, have the resources you need to develop, manufacture, and comply to local entry rules, uh, but also uh, you'll be able to leverage your momentum to rise funding. And thanks to Semia and Innovo, you'll be, access, you'll be able to access accelerator business development programs to shorten your cycles. And within the next district and the 30,000 square meters office spaces that we are, we are actually building, you'll be in a unique workplace, workplace that's going to foster your creativity, give you new opportunities and impress your customer. 
and benefit also from our soft landing program to test the market and the promise we make and then anchor your business in the earth of Europe for healthcare and thriving forward looking ecosystem. And just as an example on how to help innovators and entrepreneurs to transform healthcare in Europe and the world, I would like to illustrate that issue with the example of RICAD that you, you, you also mentioned uh, earlier. The DIRCAD, uh, this is a research institute on uh, digestive cancer. Uh, this is one of the best places in the world to access the world of surgery, surgeon, healthcare network in thoracic, heart, liver, kidney pathways. And the, this institute was built in Strasbourg, but leading globally. This is a worldwide ne network of more than 300,000 surgeons that can help you, you know, to, uh, to develop your, uh, your product and a great place to validate or penetrate, or penetrate global healthcare network. And now, as, as a conclusion, uh, I would like to mention that we also are working with hospital in Strasbourg, hospital in Boston, and with the Mihai, uh, I would like to thank uh, Laurent Stunz, uh, who is present. Um, and the, we, we, we aim at reinforce our links and the way uh, entrepreneurs and companies can test new products in hospital. And this is the bridge that we are building with you. Uh, and for, uh, for the future, uh, we will be delighted to build new partnership with Chai, for example, South, uh, South America organization, Japanese organization, uh, just for example. And my, my last words uh, will be that the, um, uh, I think the key to success uh, for me is an international consor consortium of cities, ecosystem dedicated to health, university and hospitals to help entrepreneurs and innovators. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you, Nicola, for, for this. So one thing that is really extraordinary for entrepreneurs is the access to NextMed to a variety of networks of hospitals. Again, you know, hospitals are facing the booming demographic, the aging population. So doctors have more and more patients. And therefore, you know, innovation makes a lot of sense. Uh, with regards to digital automation and also equipping doctors to do, uh, you know, also a better job uh, because, uh, you know, patients are getting more and more complicated and so on. And also the whole industry is changing. So it's a great hub to be in with NextMed and you'll hear more throughout the entire program about all the benefits you can uh, get and ac get access to through NextMed. So thank you, Nicola. Thank you very much for this. And then we have Laurent Stunz, Director of Mass eHealth Institute in Boston, also in charge of the Digital Health Hospital Sandboxes. Uh, would love to uh, meet him, to you guys to meet him, sorry. Laurence, welcome to the talk and uh, the floor is yours whenever you're ready. Great, thank you very much, Alistair, and thanks, uh, Nicholas, and uh, welcome to everybody who's participating in the program. It's great to, it's been great to see the growth of uh, this program over the past three years. So as Alistair mentioned, I'm Lawrence Stuntz. I'm the director of the uh, Massachusetts eHealth Institute. Uh, the eHealth Institute is a state economic development agency focused on growing the digital health ecosystem here in Massachusetts. Uh, I'll drop into the chat uh, some resources that where you can find information about the ecosystem, stakeholders in the ecosystem, and so on. I also want to talk uh, quickly about the digital health sandbox uh, network that we built here in Massachusetts. And um, this is basically a network of testing environments at, organ at places uh, across the state. So there are hospital-based uh, testing environments like at Brigham and Women's and Mass General uh, and Bay State Health. Uh, there are university-based uh, testing environments at MIT, at Worcester Polytech, at UMass, uh, and others. And uh, there's even a, an environment at a not-for-profit not organization at MITRE Corporation. And the idea behind these um, places, you know, the sandboxes, is that digital health companies can come to Massachusetts and uh, work with these organizations to validate their solutions, whether that's clinical validation or whether that is uh, user validation and so on. So um, it's a great place for international companies coming here uh, to get their feet wet, understand the 
environment, understand the specific needs of uh, the U.S. Uh, healthcare ecosystem. And uh, so, you know, there's more information in the links that I sent you, uh, that I sent into the chat. You can find out about that. We'd love folks to reach out and uh, give us a call. Uh, Alistair's got our information and can connect you to uh, probably Paul Bosco is the, is the right person. I think I saw that he's uh, online on our team, uh, but you can get more information at massdigitalhealth.org slash sandboxes. And I hope to see a lot of you uh, when we can actually get back in uh, together in person, hopefully this fall. So yeah. um, there's a quick question on are non-digital health startups eligible for the sandbox program? The sandbox program is specifically around testing digital health solutions. You know, these uh, environments are set up to uh, to test like hospital systems or payer provider uh, situations. So it is a, a digital health specific uh, program. So uh, I, will, I will stay on, but I will be in the background so I can answer questions if we get to them at the end. Excellent. Thank you, Laurence. Thank you. And also, you know, Miha is part of Mass Tech, which is, goes beyond just digital. Uh, even though digital has a you know big uh, important uh, component there, but uh, you know so there's other programs. Today we're presenting you a, a series of leaders, but there's others in the ecosystem depending on your needs. But thank you, Laurence. This was great. The Sandbox program is a fantastic initiative, and uh, Strasbourg is following the, the the steps also to implement a cross Atlantic program that goes into that same direction. So thanks, thanks, thank you, Laurence. Great. So last speaker in the healthcare space, biotech space, uh, before we shift to green tech eco cities uh, with the rest of the group. Uh, thank you everyone for holding tight. Uh, hopefully it's helpful. We've shared the link. Make sure you register to the um, program and apply to the program so we can contact you uh, from there. The links are in the chat. If you don't have them, just ask them and we'll share them with you. So the next speaker is Vincent Ling, Senior Director of Center of External Innovation and Business Development. So Vincent has been really helpful since the beginning of all of this. He's in a seat that's unique. He sees a lot of innovation, a lot of disruption because he sources a lot of deals for Takeda. And so I'm really delighted to have Vincent Ling with us and helping and guiding us and also helping us put some light on the complexity that is existing today. And he'll be talking to you for two or three minutes about why he's part of this initiative, why he thinks you should join and share a couple of insights of what's going on in the world of biotech, healthcare, and what you should be noting down. Thank you, Vincent, are you with us? No, can you hear me? Excellent, hello Vincent, okay. good morning. Bye. Thank you very much. Yeah, so um, uh, thank you, Alistair, for inviting me to give a few moments to, uh, to, to participate and give my ideas on the pharma industry. And I guess I'm the only one here from the pharma industry, so I'll be very broad in my approach. Uh, Takeda has been around for a long time, and it focuses on a few therapeutic areas, oncology, neuroscience, uh, GI, and rare disease. Uh, but the role I play there is more expansive than that. Because at the end of the day, it's not really about the therapeutic area, it's about what idea do you have? Because the idea is more important than therapeutic area. And the place that I, uh, the role that I play in Takeda in search and evaluation is that I don't focus on the API. I'm the only guy in the business development department that is not looking for new drugs, all right? That might sound kind of weird, right? But to me, it's more about, you know, what makes the drug work, right? Uh, sometimes it's a delivery system, right? And sometimes all you need is a proper delivery system and an old drug might work, right? And so the idea is to, if you keep focusing on creating new drugs, new drugs, it's great. It's a very hard road, but keep the patients in mind. I think that's the most important thing. You know, what new ideas do you have, all right, that you can develop, make better, that can actually treat the patient at hand? I think, you know, philosophically, that's the approach that we should have, you know, all throughout healthcare and pharma. And I think if we have that approach, I think we're heading in the right direction. Now, um, I'll just say a few words about what I think are the challenges for the pharma industry. Well, um, as you know, the pharma industry is consolidating, right? Uh, the, uh, the bigger pharmaceutical industries are buying each other out. We're buying out the smaller ones. And there's a reason for that. And there is a certain fashion these days to go for exotic treatments, right? And these exo exotic treatments right now 
uh, range from cell therapies where people are implanting living cells like CAR T cell therapies, and also gene therapies where they're injecting live viruses, right, in hopes of permanently curing uh, the patients. Um, now, unfortunately, these uh, exotic therapies have exotic price tags too. And there's a limit to how much uh, an economy can bear on this. So if you were to be confronted with a challenge in where the pharma industry, where they want to go in the future are basically curative treatments, all right? Not managing diseases, but curing diseases. It becomes very, very hard, right? But sometimes the best, how to say, the best goals to go after are the hardest ones, right? And so this should give a lot of true entrepreneurs the initiative to try to tackle something important. Now, what aspect of this goal uh, of curing diseases, you know, may you aspire to contribute to? It doesn't necessarily mean you have to understand the entire ecosystem from end to end. In fact, I don't think any one human being can do that, but there are certain aspects. Can you bring down the price of production for cell therapies? Can you find another way of creating a gene therapy? Maybe you don't use viruses. Maybe use some other carriers, right? Uh, do you have to use DNA? Right now, RNA is the, uh, is, is the flavor of the day. Uh, can you think of something else? Some other, do you really need to use CRISPR and, uh, and, to, you know, and to target genes? Uh, are there other methods that might be possible that may be a lower cost alternative, a more efficient, a more elegant system to treat the disease? And so I'll, I'll just, you know, those are my personal thoughts, right? And I think that's a very good idea for the um, innovators here to contribute to join the Innovable programs because I think you get a very good education on how to make that work. It's not just simply about the science. There are a lot of components behind it uh, that is apart from the science. There's the business, there's the people aspect, there's this net networking, and all those play almost an equally important role to not get stymied into just having technology that goes nowhere. And so I think I can just close with saying, and, uh, you know, I'd like to challenge you to think really clearly about your ideas and to have ideas. And sometimes I've seen so many pitch decks come my, my way, which aren't really new ideas. You know, they're, they're just modifications of old ideas that are about the same. They're alternatives, but not necessarily a quantum leap better. So I would challenge you there um, uh, for you, your entrepreneurs and innovators to really think creativity and utilize the programs that were presented today, um, especially you know, taking into consideration the NextMed program where it's integrated health approach. Uh, I think that's a very uh, a good place to start. Um, don't get locked up into the science. Think about you know, how you can go from end to end from the bench all the way to the bedside. And sometimes the only way you can do that is to participate with an institution that can do it. Many institutions get stuck on the bench, can't make it to the bedside. But if you're in a program that can take you all the way and also teach you the way Anovo may teach you uh, in handling uh, the, uh, the challenges that come up, I think that would be much to your benefit. So thank you for giving me a few minutes to uh, share my thoughts. Thank you, thank you, Vincent, thank you. So as you guys uh, can see, you know, we're, we're mingling with a load of smart individual that challenges, that pumps us up, that motivates us and that helps us think outside the box. Vincent is one of them. So thank you, Vincent, for being there from the beginning. And I, I love the idea from the bench to the bed, which is uh, really a vision also that NextMed has and also that you know we're seeing in Boston uh, quite a lot. So thank you for this. Um, with no further ado, we're gonna move now to the green tech and to the eco city and non-healthcare startups. Uh, but please hold tight until our last speaker, which is Bernard Kess, and more presently we'll be opening up for questions. Uh, we know it's a lot of information. We wanted to give you a flavor of the day of all the different expert organization that we've mobilized for you. The key is to help you guys. So we're there for you, all of us. Next is basically the green tech and the future for cities and communities. So basically, you know, planet health is linked to human health. So that's why we sort of co correlating both initiatives together to have one side working on the healthcare piece, trying to improve human health, on the other side, being proactive and saying, okay, why are people falling sick in the first place, right? Is it the things we eat? Is it the pollution we face? Is it the stress we face in the city we live? And so on and so on. So the, the eco city is basically a group and an ecosystem similar to the one you, you've been hearing from, from the healthcare side to mobilize, unite, create a forum so we can imagine tomorrow and implement tomorrow in our cities, in our communities, leveraging technology and also engaging everybody in that reflection and philosophy because ultimately innovation is about everybody. 
So with no further ado, Chris Sowa, Global Vice President of Schneider Electric, who will be sharing to us his view of uh, the future for cities and that we can integrate in our thinking as well and, and exchange with him in a conversation. So Chris, are you with us? Yes, thank you, Alistair. Appreciate Perfect. being here today. Uh, as, as, as some of you may know, as Schneider Electric, uh, we're a global company in 110 companies, uh, 110 countries rather. But this particular collaboration is very interesting for us because we are a, a French-based company uh, in Paris, but also um, a company that has a regional headquarters in the Massachusetts Metro Boston area. So I love this collaboration between Strasbourg and Boston as, as being a great place to try out innovative ideas uh, for eco cities. And you know, Schneider Electric, a lot of people may know us as a company that is a leader in electrical products, uh, but we're also very focused on you know, uh, having a major transformational impact uh, from a sustainability and climate change perspective. So our scientists, like those in many other places, uh, strongly believe that the impact of climate change of, of uh, increasing temperature by, by 1.5 degrees in the coming years is gonna have a major catastrophic impact. Indeed, uh, certainly critical to our health and well-being. And so, you know, within the EcoCities uh, innovation platform that, sh that um, the Innovo, Innovo team and Alistair have uh, created for us, it's a great opportunity for all the people uh, in this group to, to engage on that next generation of solutions. And as the, next, uh, as the last speaker mentioned, think about ways to create that next big leap. Uh, so from a Schneider Electric perspective, you know, we're committed to, um, to climate um, uh, in reduction in, in impact in terms of uh, our objectives around the 2025 a carbon neutral target that our CEO has set for us. Uh, all of the executives at Schneider Electric, including myself, our bonus is partly committed uh, based on how well we do in, in impacting our, our global goals around climate change. So this literally, uh, we're putting our money where our mouth is. It, it directly impacts all of us as well as it does um, you know, our communities. So as, as that as a backdrop, we've been investing in new digital solutions and as a part of our innovation community, we have a team called Innovation of the Edge, which invests 500 million euros around the globe. And we have a, a local team here in the Boston area, as well as in France, that is looking at ways of, of impacting climate change in, in a positive way. A key focus for us is on, is on buildings and, and on cities. You know, we know that the uh, impact of the, the buildings area can be as much as 38% of, of the global energy related to CO2 is coming from, from the building sector. And so you know, we're very interested in innovating in the design area uh, around microgrids and solar storage, as well as in the building process, helping to uh, reduce the carbon footprint of materials during the build process and making sure that we're optimizing for the energy carbon footprint and comfort within buildings. And then during operate, you know, we're looking for next generation uh, solutions, physics-based solutions to help us operate buildings in a more efficient way and reduce carbon and, on an ongoing basis and driving efficiency. And we know that the people on this call uh, are really key to helping us really take a bite out of climate change and, and attack this problem now through innovation and really looking forward to um, working with the community in Boston, Strasbourg on those opportunities. Thank you, Alistair. Excellent, thank you, Chris. So definitely this uh, pumps me even more to think with making something great happen. And I'm really glad to have you, Chris, uh, part of this community. Uh, you've been instrumental, you've been very supportive also last year in our last event, the Echo City Revolution. So hopefully uh, some of the Echo City green tech companies, also government agencies, tech transfer agencies heard the types of uh, you know, technologies and solutions you're looking for and feel free to reach out uh, with that to connect uh, you guys also to the right people. So if you think you can work with Chris, let us know and we'll make sure we make the introduction. This is also a networking event. If you see anyone, we'll make sure we connect you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Chris. Thank you for that. Uh, and then we have Marie de Lozon, COO of 2CRSI, also known uh, the company name as Too Crazy, uh, which uh, I kind of love the name. And what these guys are working on, uh, I think, is very exciting. It's basically, uh, you know, servers that are energy efficient. You know, and Marie de Lozon is going to tell you a bit more about uh, exactly what, what they're doing. So, Marie, are you with us? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Excellent. Welcome to the call, Marie de Lozon. Marie de Thank you. Thank you, Alistair. Um, so yes, my name is Marie de Lozon. I'm the CEO of uh, 2CRSI. Um, I was actually quite impressed by the quality of the ecosystem that is uh, gathered in this room. Um, I see that uh, based on the statistics that Alistair, Alistair showed before, before, most people in the room are really passionate about curing diseases and improving human health and well-being. And so I think it's great. And on our side at 2CRSI, uh, we wake up every morning to design and manufacture IT servers that others have never dreamt or dared to make before. And that's why, indeed, some people call us uh, too crazy in English, and it's way easier to remember. Um, uh, you asked us to uh, present a vision of, uh, of IT. And I think, um, um, to make it simple, I think it's based on three pillars. Um, the first one is, um, basically, we see that um, the world needs more than ever compute power um, and storage. Um, and I actually bet that the entrepreneurs in this room need that too. And that's why we design and manufacture high performance custom made IT. Um, this means for instance, that we can offer up to 13,824 cores in one single tank. So you see how, how the, the, the level of density we're able to achieve. Um, however, of course, uh, the objective is not to, uh, to sell a Formula One when you only need a car to buy some croissants. And, uh, and our customers usually say that they like us for providing the exact solution they need. Um, we work in terms of customers, we work with top research institutes uh, such as uh, IHU or IRCAD. Um, we work with large corporates, but also uh, with startups. Um, we are able to, uh, to provide various solutions from a whole data center uh, to a specific workstations or, or HPC as a service. Um, the, the second aspect, so this is the first aspect was high performance because today it's, it's not, um, I mean, it's not an option. We need with big data, with internet of things, etc. we all need more, more compute power. But with, with the world's DCs, uh, data centers, sorry, using more energy than some, some developed countries, um, it's our responsibility to try to reduce the IT energy need as much as we can. So that's why we uh, design our systems in order to reduce the overall energy consumption, and notably with state-of-the-art air cooling, direct liquid cooling, and immersion cooling technologies. I can develop that later on if there, is, that there are any questions. And the beauty of this of the those systems is um, is that lower energy consumptions, of course, mean lower opex, um, but as well as a, a reduced carbon footprint. And on top of that, our liquid cooling systems offer the ability to reuse the waste heat, which further lower costs of ownership, as well as the carbon footprint. And that heat can be used for uh, domestic hot water, for swimming pools, for greenhouses, or even district heating. We were talking about EcoCity, if you further increase the temperature. And then the last, the third pillar uh, would probably be um, local manufacturing. Um, today we have six production sites worldwide, um, among which one in France, in Strasbourg one uh, in the US and California, and really soon one in upstate New York. So uh, it uh, so will be quite neighbors uh, from the uh, people in Boston. And uh, this local manufacturing obviously means uh, less transport, but also more local skilled jobs. So that's, that's, something, that's also something quite, um, quite important uh, in our eyes. So I would just say that um, as a conclusion, um, uh, I think we are as passionate to make the best IT as uh, all people in, in this room are keen to contribute to, uh, uh, to human health. 
uh, and or to grow a successful business. And, uh, and therefore, we'd be happy to be in touch and see uh, how we can help. Excellent, Marie de Lausanne, thank you. So th these are experts and leaders in the space of EcoCity. Uh, we have more that will surround you throughout the next month of the program, accelerating your business. You'll be surrounded by people alike with visions of making an impact. So thank you, Marie de Lausanne, you're one of them. Really glad to have you with us today. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Great, thanks. So next, uh, we'll just do a quick poll uh, to make sure everyone stays engaged. The last poll uh, for today before the last two speakers, and then we'll go into q and I don't know about you, but I feel pumped about this program. So polling three, customizing your needs. So what elements would make the program even more attractive? Give us a sense of you know, what we can integrate in the program to really make you make the decision to go to the next step. So here's the poll. It should be uh, appearing on your screen. We'll be reviewing all the data that was provided today to make sure we uh, customize the program to your needs. So it's great, great. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Okay, I'm waiting a couple of seconds and I will share the results with everybody. This is a theme for the program also. We'll be sharing insight, contacts, networks all throughout the program. You'll come out of this with a huge increased address book and Rotodex. Uh, so here we go. Uh, last people to vote and then I will be sharing it uh, online. Okay, it seems to stabilize, so I will share it. Okay, so speed network, networking with relevant contact indeed will be doing one-on-one -on -one connection, but also using technology as a company um, software called Hopin to basically be able to meet in five minutes a high volume of people and you know leverage serendipity, but also make sure these people are qualified to your business. Thought leaders providing insight and foresight. Indeed, all throughout the program, you'll have workshops if you're a startup with expert in venture capital and venture building, but also if you're not a startup, we'll organize events with thought leaders in the space of healthcare, biotech, but also the, the space of eco city. Connect with other cities. This is great. That's we will uh, work with the city of Boston and Strasbourg for that. Uh, pitching in front of investors. That's the program with the investors. We talked about the, the demo days and the forum, which will be led by Nick Anderson and Gary Jenks in the Silicon Valley and Michel Husser in France. Cultural exchanges and travel, indeed, and with our partners from Cambridge Innovation Center, you'll be able to have an office space. Uh, come here as soon as things reopen. Hopefully things are looking uh, pretty optimistic uh, in front of us. Um, very shortly and then other feel free to comment what do you mean by other and we will uh, come back to you so thanks for this and now we are going into the two last speakers so we have Tamin Daoudi he's the president of Creacro he's a product uh, designer and uh, he sees the world with the eyes of design which can apply both in healthcare and eco city He'll uh, brief, and he's also in charge of many creative entrepreneurs. So Creacro is an accelerator of creative talents. And you'll learn a bit more how Tamim and his team and his group will participate and contribute into the program. And then we'll go to Bernard Kress, uh, Microsoft HoloLens 2, uh, for a last um, talk before going to questions and answer. Thank you, Tamim. The floor is yours whenever you're ready. Are you with us, Tamim? One second. Maybe Tamim is an attendee, so we need to, yes. Okay, Tamim, I'm with you in one second. Okay, you should now be a panelist. Tamim, are you with us? Yes, hi, Alistair. Uh, sorry, maybe I just clicked on the, on the wrong link, so. No problem. Uh... No problem. All right, uh, maybe a quick, uh, so thank you for this uh, opportunity again, and uh, very happy to be part of this group. Um, so a quick presentation maybe. So uh, like I said, I'm a product designer. I'm co-owner of uh, Evoque International. We're based in Strasbourg and uh, Nancy. And we accompany actually our clients, so uh, startups and uh, major groups also uh, from uh, ideation to uh, production uh, scale. 
Um, and so uh, I'm also a lecturer at the University of Strasbourg. And what maybe interests us most today is uh, uh, my activity as the president of uh, ACRO uh, in Strasbourg. So um, a few uh, few words then. So ACRO stands for, uh, so it's A-C-C-R-O. It's uh, Action for the Creative Development of Organizations. Um, it's founded by uh, the Euro Metropole of Strasbourg in uh, 2014. Its main goal is to promote uh, creativity as an economical lever to enhance, to enhance uh, businesses. Uh, we create links between uh, creative industries and uh, economical sectors in order to initiate uh, innovative projects and partnerships. Uh, so maybe a definition of creativity, a quick one. Uh, creativity is a tool dedicated to problem solving, um, finding cutting edge solutions uh, by thinking outside the box. And our job is to implement this state of mind uh, as much as possible uh, within public and uh, private institutions. So how we do it, uh, we prove it uh, by highlighting successful partnerships through keynotes, debates, and exhibitions, uh, by investing through uh, an economical tool that we have called Tango Scam, um, rewarding a, a project for both its creative and economical uh, potential uh, up to 20,000 euros, uh, so actually it works uh, between, uh, for instance, a firm in Boston that would work with a creative person in Strasbourg. Uh, if the project makes sense and has a high potential, then actually uh, we can uh, fund this project up to 20,000 euros. So it's pretty interesting. Uh, and also last thing, by animating a dense creative network of associations and professionals in order to develop their businesses, um, and most important thing, I think it's great to announce that uh, on, from the 23rd to the 25th of September, we'll be hosting the European Biennale of Creativity in Strasbourg. Um, and uh, it will be a weekend that will gather industries, institutions, and citizens around creativity. Um, so today, it's really it's an, an opportunity, like, like I said, for us to extend our activities and link up with uh, our Boston counterparts uh, to create synergies, to generate uh, more innovative projects uh, and develop businesses uh, in the fields of healthcare and eco cities. So uh, if you have, of course, any questions uh, uh, regarding uh, creativity, how we can help you, if you need a creative firm or person, whether it's an uh, a designer, UX, uh, a graphic designer, uh, architect, artist, we have the network and we can help you uh, find the correct resource uh, in order to uh, uh, develop your project. That would be it. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. Tamim, this is uh, great to have you with us and the designers are very excited and good to learn there's a national grant for startups. So we have lots of these different programs. So get in touch with us and will funnel you to the right individuals. So big companies, high value companies are not just built by one set of profile, technology or business. It's really encompassing everybody. So designers, philosophers, anthropologues, the biggest companies like Google or Microsoft that you will be hearing from in a few are built and advised by people who understand humanities so that's one of the strengths from both cities is to look at innovation with really more of a 360 look to build innovation that matters for people that add a lot of value to humans, right? If we're not designing products for humans, we're not going to do a lot of revenue, a lot of sales because humans will simply not buy it. So that's also one key strength of this initiative is you will be facing different mindset and people who will encourage you to think differently. So thank you, Tamim, uh, for being here. And uh, we're going to go to the sure. next speaker. Yep. Before we head to the next speaker, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the Q&A. We'd love to hear from you. Comments, anything that you'd like to see more of. Uh, this is a great time. And at the end, we'll be opening up the floor to take any questions. Thank you, Azadi. Thank you very much. So the final speaker, so we have the alumni. Very important. So maybe alumni, let's all connect all at once on the panel here. Uh, we're running a little bit out of time, so let's you know keep it short and sweet, uh, and then so we leave enough space for questions. But thanks for being here, guys. Uh, are you with us, uh, Geoffrey, Engin, Philippe? I would say maybe let's just put the webcams uh, all uh, all of us. The Innovo alumni uh, are part of a group of over forty entrepreneurs now. Uh, we are continuously monitoring their success and we're impressed by uh, what these three entrepreneurs have been doing. So Geoffrey, are you with us? Engin, Philippe? Uh, I'm here. 
Excellent. Uh, so, I'm start, uh, Engen. Let's go. Thank you. Okay, so my name is Engen Rana. I'm CEO of Sparta Medical. Uh, we develop antiviral, antimicrobial, and anti-inflammatory coatings. Uh, and when we started the Innova program, our focus was mostly medical. Uh, that's our background. But with the change in the situation with COVID, uh, there was lots of demand from the other industries. So that was one of the main things we worked uh, during the Innova to change our uh, way of presenting ourselves for other sectors. And this really paid dividends. Uh, recently, we have signed a contract with a big cosmetic company, a multinational company. Even though we continue working on the uh, medical part and we are in uh, final parts of negotiation for a co-development with a German company. And uh, that was one advantage to be able to expand our reach. And the second one is to have our feet in uh, US, which will be a strategic market for us. Any company involved in Medicare, it is important. And another part is that uh, Innova alumni and the network is quite strong. And it keeps us, I already work with uh, several immune, um, Innova alumni companies. And also it keeps us in contact with the other actors such as NextMed, Eurometropol. So it provides us with a more organic interaction with our surroundings. So I strongly uh, recommend it for the companies who are looking for acceleration and expansion. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you very much. And again, who's a hardworking entrepreneur. Uh, we worked very hard with him as well. And thanks for, and congrats for the success. Congrats. Thank you. So next we have uh, Geoffrey, Geoffrey Katz, uh, CEO of Quit. Fantastic company, inspiring. Geoffrey, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Excellent. Yes, I'm Geoffrey, uh, CEO and co-founder of Quit, KWIC. And we are building uh, digital therapeutic solutions to fight against addiction. And right, right now we are fighting against uh, smoking cessation, uh, against smoking addiction. Uh, we are already helping millions of people around the world. So we help both the health of the people and the health of the planet uh, because uh, cigarette is a high pollutant. And we were happy to, to participate in the very first uh, Inuvo cohort. And so yeah, it was cool because there, were, there was a lot of uh, nice speakers and people who bring you uh, value. So that's all. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. And Geoffrey recently has been raising some funds and making some great progress uh, and is an example of resilience. And we're really glad to have Geoffrey, who has been very active in the alumni group since the beginning. So thanks for being the first, one of the first in that program. And hopefully now uh, with that uh, bigger ecosystem also, we can add more opportunities for you and your business. Thank you. And then Philippe Bastide, are you with us, Philippe? Dianozek. Yes, I am Alistair. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, welcome, Philippe. Thank you. Excellent. I'm glad to, uh, to hear and see some, uh, some familiar faces. It reminds me good memories. Um, so I'm, I'm the co-founder of uh, Dianozek, uh, a Strasbourg-based medtech startup, uh, which is dedicated to uh, the, the largely uh, underserved uh, he ear, nose, and throat market and more specifically, uh, chronic rhinitis, chronic sinusitis, and uh, nose pain. So quickly today, I, I really wanted to give a tribute to the teams in, in Boston and, and Strasbourg, uh, who actually uh, relentlessly um, uh, promote the collaboration between those two uh, fantastic ecosystems. Uh, regarding the program, a couple of things real quick. Um, you have to bear in mind that there, there is a lot of prep work prior to the soft landing program itself, which is something uh, absolutely great because when you get there, you are uh, already well prepared. Um, we, we've been uh, you know, challenged regarding our project, which is also great. Uh, you don't want people to tell you that you are bright and beautiful, but to get valuable feedback, which we can, you can get through the program. Uh, we learned a lot about the U.S. and how to prepare our entry in this complex market, which is uh, absolutely vital as well. Uh, we had the opportunity to interact with uh, physicians uh, and, and present our product to them. And last but not least, we, meet, uh, we met uh, sorry, potential uh, investors. So since the program, we have launched uh, our first product and it has been uh, decided after the program to, um, uh, to go for the U.S. market. Uh, in a very structured uh, manner. Uh, last point in conclusion, don't forget that those guys at, uh, at Inuvo 
and all the, uh, the, the people surrounding them, which are equally important, they have, uh, so to speak, uh, horsepower under the hood. So do not hesitate to challenge them as they challenge you because it's uh, gonna be uh, mutually beneficial. Thank yes. you, Alison. Absolutely, thank you, Philippe. Thank you very much for this. So uh, this is then bringing us, so thank you for the alumni and uh, the, also a special shout out to all our alumni with whom we're gonna give you opportunity throughout the program as well. And hopefully mingling with the new alumni that are gonna be uh, meeting uh, all of you and networking. So thank you. And now the final uh, speaker, and we'll go to question, is Bernard Kress. So Bernard Kress was basically um, one of my early uh, mentor in, and inspiration when I went for one year in the Silicon Valley. He put me on the pathway of innovation uh, over there and sort of pushed uh, the, the, to me to think outside the box and was very instrumental in creating this Strasbourg Boston uh, program initially. Bernard Kress is from Alsace. He's also uh, executive at Google Glass prior to Microsoft and now also designing the HoloLens 2. He's a board member of SPI, uh, which is basically an organization for photonics. And he's fantastic, extremely smart, and from Strasbourg and Boston. Thank you, Alistair. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. Um, and uh, hopefully, uh, uh, I'll be able to uh, transfer my uh, vision for, um, uh, you know, how mixed reality will shape uh, the future of uh, industry in the next years. I have a few slides to share, so I'm going to share them uh, with you. Um, and then we'll open for questions and please feel free to put the questions in the comments so we can catch back with you after the event if you need to run on uh, at the time of the at, at 10 or 3, 4 p.m. Can you see the slides? Yes. Yeah, so, so mixed reality at uh, Microsoft, we really believe that this is the future of computing and the future of uh, human interaction. As Al Alistair said, I'm a distinguished engineer at uh, Microsoft, HoloLens, and also the president of the International Society for Optics and Photonics. A um, few words about me. Uh, as Alistair mentioned, I started in, in Strasbourg in academia at the University of Strasbourg, but I also spent uh, a few months in, in Worcester at the Worcester Polytechnic Institute as an associate professor in the early 90s, which is very close to Boston. I actually got a Strasbourg Boston uh, scholarship to, to study there. Then I went to King's College and then I went to the Silicon Valley uh, to uh, stop my academia um, uh, activities uh, and uh, really uh, jump into startup uh, entrepreneurship with, uh, I created about 10 startups in the Silicon Valley I have to say, none of them really made it uh, as an investor would, would call it to make it. But, uh, you know, nevertheless, um, we opened a few, few startups. We raised uh, 85 million in one, 4 million in the other. But we, we didn't really make it big, as per uh, investor would say. And then I started large corporations, starting with Siemens and then Google X Labs uh, and uh, Microsoft uh, right now. But... The common backbone, which is really um, an advice to uh, all entrepreneurs, is to, you know, you can have a diverse path as me, academia, startup entrepreneurship and large corporation, but you really want to have a backbone. And for me, the backbone was optics and photonics, which is a constant and the same in involvement in the international society for optics and photonics. So for the past year, I served, uh, 30 years, sorry, I served many successive high-tech booms, the optical computing for, from the early 90s, then the optical telecom boom, which crashed, of course, with the internet uh, explosion in 2000, uh, the optical data storage, and now the AR, VR, MR. But this is also another advice that I have for you. Beware, everything is in motion in the high-tech industry. There's no status quo. Anticipate the next booms by being a savvy industry news reader and technologist, by participating in international meetings and events and networking, just like Alistair proposes the, uh, today uh, with your peers. So let's look a little bit at uh, XR or MR, mixed reality. Well, it didn't really get impacted by COVID. Uh, it didn't really get impacted by COVID, but even worse, you know, uh, better, I should say, is that uh, COVID actually boosted tremendously the adoption of uh, XR. Here, here you can see uh, the monthly connected headsets on Steam, uh, which are VR headsets, and boosted from 1 million to 2 million in the first two months of the pandemic, which is amazing. And of course, AR and VR will lead the way in a post-pandemic world. So what is it, the next big thing? 
Well, of course, you have to look at Gartner. Gartner is really the industry analyst, you know, that every every startup should really look at, you know, the, the hype cycle. And what did Gartner uh, find? Well, that the smartphone sales declined 5% in the fourth quarter of 2020, which is the first time. So what is the next big thing? Is it mixed reality? Well, at Microsoft, we think that mixed reality is the third wave of computing, personal computer smartphones, and then mixed reality. And really, it's transforming enterprises by allowing uh, remote collaboration, guided training and task management, training and simulation, sales assistant, design prototyping, and contextual data overlay. But really, most, most importantly, you have to look at the return on investment and what is the value to enterprise. Well, it's improved skilling, it's improved efficiency and quality gains, and also it empowers first-line workers, which is really important. How do we do this? Well, with the mixed reality stack, which includes, of course, the intelligent devices, as Alistair mentioned, HoloLens 2, but also the mixed reality applications, Dynamics 365, and all the Microsoft partners, of course, the ISVs, and also Azure mixed reality services. Now, if you if you notice the last month, we actually uh, um, 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 unveiled our new um, cloud MR service, which is called Microsoft Mesh. And what is Microsoft Mesh? It's really the core. It's not so much the hardware that is important mixed reality. It's the use case. Uh, imagine that Steve Jobs would, would have shipped the iPhone without the iTunes. Well, it wouldn't have worked. You need to have the best hardware and the best use case. And the use case here is Mesh. And what is Mesh? Mesh actually allows you to have the sense of presence of another human being with you without this human being being in the same room. So you can actually collaborate. You can collaborate between Strasbourg and Boston, and you can really have the sense of someone being in the room without being in the room. And this, of course, very important for, um, you know, uh, uh, surgical guidance, surg uh, medical imaging, remote procedures and teaching. But as you might have uh, noticed, also the army is very, very interested. Last, uh, last month, we got $22 billion from the US army uh, over 10 years to develop uh, headsets for, uh, for the army. This is the largest P, or it's not an investment. I have to say this is a purchase order. It's the largest purchase order ever in the history of uh, mixed reality. Magic Leap also is touting another uh, uh, um, uh, tool such as uh, Mesh. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg also has the same, the same idea about presence and real avatars. And when you look at when you look at Facebook, you see that almost one fifth of Facebook employees are today working in VR and AR. This is a lot. This is ten thousand people. This is amazing. Of course, Apple, you know, is doing the same thing, and Apple's coming out with a VR headset and an AR headset. But really, what I want to say, you know, what Alistair is doing is really what we're doing also here with the Society for um, uh, Optics and Photonics. We're bringing large corporations and startups together along with academia to provide a platform for collaboration. And, um, and this, this happened last, last month. It was an online event, of course, but uh, usually we have our event in San Francisco at the Moscone Center. Uh, and being, having been elected at, as the, 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 the president of the International Society helped me to, um, you know, um, uh, have uh, some uh, some initiatives. This is one initiative that I had before I was elected. I was in Strasbourg at the, the SBA Photonics Europe 2004-2006 and still going on. This is an initiative for university spin-offs and pre-venture stage startups, the creation of the Photonics Innovation Village and uh, industry larger corporations then put a pool in place to give prices to the most um, prominent uh, startups there. And that's actually happening in Strasbourg every two years. Also something else that's happening in Strasbourg is our initiative to provide students exposure to industry, which is important before being a, a startup entrepreneurship. You know, the entrepreneur is actually a student and really allowing this exposure is really important. That's what we do with the optical design challenge. And one of them happened in Strasbourg in 2018. You can see the invitation card here. I still have it. And I'm very proud to say that, um, you know, it had, um, this, this, is, this is my last slide. It had um, this, this uh, optical design challenge had a, a direct impact on one of the laureates of our 2018 ARVR MR optical design challenge in Strasbourg. Stan Larocque, which were, who was um, a student at that time, got the first prize at this, uh, at this, um, 
this this uh, event here, and this gave him this uh, je ne sais quoi to start his own startup, um, drop out of school, start his own startup, uh, raise money. He just raised. He's, he's actually right now in the Silicon Valley here with me. I just raised ten million dollars, and um, and has twenty employees in Paris. Well. See, he didn't raise it in Paris. He had to come to the Silicon Valley to raise it, which is an important point. He tried to raise it during one year in Paris, could not. He had to come to the Silicon Valley. He's actually living at the, um, at the, the mansion of, the, of uh, 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 Palmer Lucky, which is the creator of uh, Oculus here in the Silicon Valley. He gave him his house to raise capital and to invite um, Silicon Valley entrepreneurs. This is Stan Larocque, and uh, I'm super glad that we were able to, exactly as Alistair does, you know, provide this platform for collaboration between large industries, academia, and uh, and startups, especially startups, to give the the flame of entrepreneurship to a guy, 25 year old, actually at that time he was 22, uh, Stan and have him uh, uh, develop his startup. You now, Apple is looking at him. He just had a meeting with Apple here in Cupertino. He had a meeting with Microsoft, of course. He had a meeting with Google and he had a meeting with Facebook. And really, this is something that you all can do, you know. But the important thing is you can't work in, so in solitary mode. You have to have this exposure that Alistair is really uh, uh, providing through Innovo or what we're trying to do with the Optical Society. Thank Great. you. I was on a message to you this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Bernard, for so exceptional the mesh. You know, I hope we will be able to use it during our program. Uh, I think that's going to be perfect uh, to meet with people. Uh, so I'll, I'll look forward to learning more about this as well for the Microsoft Mesh. And indeed, uh, you know, it takes a village to build a company. That's why today we brought that village to you, expert leaders, executives. Thank you, Bernard, for, for being here from different areas of the world, different industries, because everything is coming together with the technological revolution 4.0. So it's really important to think about the box, think outside the box and look at the different elements that are moving. So hopefully this was helpful and insightful. We're now opening up for questions. Uh, does anyone have any questions for any of our panelists? And we'll we'll stay uh, ten minutes uh, ten minutes of questions until ten 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 or ten fifteen maximum, and then we'll close the event. Any any questions? Anybody? Well, we can either take it in written or uh, open the mic for you uh, as you prefer. And you can raise your hand if you want the mic to be open. Okay, so we're getting questions. Azadeh, did you want to get the questions for, for all of us? Yes, we have a couple coming in. Thanks, Bernard, for that great talk. Uh, so from Bruno, as a product designer based in Strasbourg, um, questions, which questions will be more about getting in contact with people, companies, and collaborating? So great that you highlighted that. Uh, Marie de la Zone from Too Crazy. Uh, what's the next challenge in VR AR, would you say? Yeah, so, so uh, really um, what I emphasized in, in, uh, in my presentation is the networking, the importance of networking. Uh, it happens in Strasbourg, it happens in Boston, but we're a global village here. It also happens in Asia, it happens in Africa, it happens in South America. You have to, you have to travel just like, uh, you know, Stan did it, this, this entrepreneur, uh, you know. Um, he had to come to the Silicon Valley. That's where the in, in investors are, you know, and that's where he started to raise money. And then starting to raise money in the Silicon Valley, he had the French um, VCs coming. Oh, I, we saw that uh, Peter Thiel gave you some money and uh, would like to give you some money also. Anyway, um, what is the big, what is the next challenge in the VR AR field? Well, I, I guess there are two challenges. The first challenge is the hardware, you know, make everything fit in a form factor that, you know, looks like this. And we're not there yet. And uh, that's why. 20% of uh, Facebook employees are actually working on uh, AR, VR, 10,000 people. And the second challenge is something that we're, we're trying to figure out at Microsoft and something that uh, Apple is trying to figure out, Google, Facebook, and Amazon. And it's really, and Magic Leap, it's really the, the, the use case, you know, the, not the killer app. A killer app is very different from a use case. The use case is really something you can't do with your cell phone, you know, something that you have to do with your headset. And we think that the sense of presence, having the sense of your collaborator being in the same room, sitting with you on a chair, 
you know, having a coffee on that table on which you are, but being in Japan rather than here in, in, in San Francisco is really the use case. Based on this use case, then you can develop thousands of killer apps, but really this is the use case that we see um, and that many others see in, uh, in, in AR and VR. It's the sense of presence. Excellent. Which revolutionizes, revolutionizes completely, you know, the collaboration between humans. Excellent. So Bernard, we have uh, also Vincent Ling. Uh, I am very interested in the business deal with the Department of Defense as purchase order. Clearly, this is a research project, not finished product. Is it common to get this kind of commitment for vapor hardware application? Actually, um, it's um, it's a product. You know, we we have it uh, functioning, and the, the the military is testing it since about. So the first the first order we got from the military was in 2018, half a billion dollar, and we thought that that was a big order. Um, so we we developed uh, we we shipped uh, 40,000. Um, actually, we're going we we're shipping now 40,000 units. We shipped a few hundred units to the military, and they are actually testing it since uh, since about one and a half year now, uh, and. Um, these uh, devices are used all over the planet. Um, we had um, three years ago. We had um, we had uh, 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 some purchases of a, a Hololens uh, V2 um, by a company in Russia, and we found out that it was actually a, a smokescreen for um, you know the army, the, um, the the Russian army, and they're using uh, these headsets now in the tanks. Um, and um, you know, this is a real thing. This, these headsets are used everywhere. And uh, of course we have to work on the rugged ne ruggedness of these uh, headsets, but it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a real device since uh, we shipped the first one in 2016. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Quick question, uh, Bernard, for Paul Bosco. I'm not versed in AR, VR, MR at all. What are some of interesting application in the healthcare space? Well, I guess uh, that would be a, a good question for uh, IRCAD. Uh, and uh, Luc Soler at the uh, IRCAD in Strasbourg. And uh, we are very proud that uh, uh, IRCAD is uh, using our headsets uh, for surgical guidance and uh, uh, medical imaging, uh, and also um, uh, remote uh, teaching. And uh, I, I showed some slides where how uh, mixed reality uh, will revolutionize uh, industry, um, first uh, enterprise and then consumer with uh, uh, the with mesh. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, thank you, Bernard. So, and you know, maybe it could be interesting to connect you, Bernard, and Microsoft to the Sandbox program in Boston, giving you access to the digital health sandboxes program with the hospitals. So, uh, there could be some uh, good uh, opportunities for both parties there. So, we'll make sure we, we make this happen. So well, this is the end of the session, uh, opening for question. Last message here on the basically conference program for entrepreneurs, sxbbos.com. You can apply here, contact us or Azade or myself or any one of your uh, local leaders for more information on how to participate. For startups, it's really up to May 15th to apply so we can meet with you present you uh, the program in detail and how it's going to apply for, for your objectives. So any more questions from anybody or the panelists? Any last words you guys would want to share before, before we go? Any last message from anybody? I would just say that uh, I, I, I have to emphasize the, 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 the need for a collaboration and also uh, uh, um, uh, cross uh, uh, cross pond uh, uh, collaboration between uh, between uh, France and, and, and the US and uh, in this particular case between uh, Strasbourg and Boston uh, again I sh uh, I'll show the, the example of Stan Larocque who was able to raise capital because he came from Paris to to Silicon Valley you know to raise his capital and then go back to Paris it's really it's it's really the networking and 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 um, which is going to make or break your your startup and i see it today with uh, with stan yes absolutely no no and, and this is what we're going to help you do connect with the best people the best networks and you've heard uh, several of them today and here to help you because we know entrepreneurship is tomorrow's jobs it's tomorrow's economy it solves problems it's good and uh, we're passionate about innovation so 
will do our best to help you as we help the alumni and we look forward to have you participate. Any other questions, comment from anybody? There's one question, Nick Anderson, what is the pathway for comp companies that early that may be pre-track one? So that's a good question. So if you, let's say you apply and we think you're too early, well, we'll always have a solution for you. So no matter what, apply. Either the program is right for you and you will be taking you through the process or we'll be guiding you to another partner, an accelerator, SEMIA, or an incubator in Boston to where you can may find you know earlier stage support. But don't get limited by you know how early you are. The sooner you get exposed to the market, the sooner you get exposed to these contacts, the better and the sooner you want to get the epiphany moment or the network connection that's going to change the game like Bernard talked about. So you know it's never too early. It's always too too late is always too late. Too early is never too late. So anyone of you? Uh, uh, Alistair, maybe just one word. This is uh, Nicholas from NextMed. Uh, just, uh, just one word to the entrepreneurs. Uh, don't put yourself the limit. You know, you, that, there's no limit to, uh, and there's no ideal moment, ideal moment to ask for a grant, to ask for an advisor. Uh, if there's no money, if there's no, if, if there are no grant, uh, we will tell you that there are no grant. But don't, um, don't be sure of the answer before you ask the question. Excellent. There is a solution for, uh, I think that the, the, there are many solutions. What is complicated is to know the pathway. And we are here with you, Alistair. And thank you for the energy you put in this uh, uh, transatlantic co collaboration. But uh, we, we have to know the pathway for you. Excellent, excellent. And, you know, as entrepreneurs, you will find other economic development leaders who are entrepreneurs as well. <laughs> And, and are really operating in an agile way. And we've coached them, we've been immersed all together as one you know, for three years. So they understand entrepreneurship, they know speed is key, urgency, they know what you need, connections and so on. So everyone is aligned to your needs. You'll not find this anywhere else, uh, that's the promise. You know, and thanks for everybody for being here, all the partners, all uh, the organization that are making this possible and helping these entrepreneurs, you know, go through a, a cleaner pathway. I'm going to show the sponsors once again here to not forget everybody. So this is the global village uh, that uh, Bernard was talking about, but there's more partners as well. The city of Strasbourg, the city of Boston, other cities, other sister cities of these cities, you want to access a market. It's fabulous what's happening. So I really encourage you to sign up and be part of the alumni working with NextMed, with IRCAD, with the business angels and investors. We've designed some fantastic programs for you uh, based on experience, based on real life experience. And we look forward to basically having all of you join and participate in more events. So thank you for having been with us today. Any last final words from the panelists or the participants? Any last questions? Otherwise we'll resume the call and we'll hope to see you soon. Thank you, Alistair. Thank you, Bernard. Thank you also for waking up early on the Silicon Valley side. Thank you. So, Thank you very much, Alistair. Great. So we'll send the links for registration and everything by email. And we look forward to any comments, any questions with that to serve you, facilitate the journey into growth and, and recovery post-pandemic, working with the cities and this amazing ecosystem. So we look forward to connecting. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Very good, good to see all the comments. It's, it, it pumps us up a bit more. So thank you. Salut. Merci. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for all bye the bye for your participation. Thank you very much for being here. Let's go. Bye -bye. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.